Hello everyone, my name is Ruben Canlas Jr. and today I'm going to talk about stakeholder analysis and how it applies to the doctor-patient relationship. But first, let's review some related concepts from your management subjects. In leadership class, we emphasize that it's about getting people to do the right thing. But what's more important actually is to be able to influence people or your patients so that they change their behavior. This can apply very well in the doctor-patient relationship. When you become doctors, you, become, you, are, you arrive at a position of authority. After all, you will go through or you have gone through 10 years of schooling and had to pass the board exams. But you'll soon find out that the knowledge and skills you accumulated in med school will not be enough to influence your patient's behavior. It's not enough to give patients a rational explanation of why they need to change. In the book, The Heart of Change by John Cotter, for example, he says that most leaders simply give the analysis to, their, to the people and expect people to say, aha, this is why I need to change. That often doesn't happen. He calls this the analyze, think, change paradigm, this box over here. Instead, he says, what really works is to make the people see and feel the need to change. What that means is that we give people, your patients, a clear visual reason for the need to change. Make them visualize the need to change and then connect to their feelings or emotions so that they see and feel the need to change. Of course, that doesn't mean that this is much better than analyze, think, and change. You could do both. They don't, they don't necessarily oppose each other. And that's the reason why you as doctors will need to develop a skill of crafting a clear picture of why people need to change. It doesn't mean you should overpromise. It just has to be a sincere, believable vision that your patients will be, will be able to or will be willing to buy into. Here's an example. Let's say you're trying to treat a patient with tuberculosis or a heart problem and you're trying to convince them to change their lifestyle, to like change their diet and live a healthier lifestyle. Like for example, in a patient with a heart condition, you're trying to convince them to do some light exercise every day for, for 40 minutes. And the patient always says, oh, but, but doc, how am I going to do that? I'm so busy. So here's where you present a clear vision for change. You can tell the patient after six months of therapy or exercise, you will be living a healthier life. You will be out of pain, getting back to work, back on track, and out of worry. So that kind of example presents a clear picture of why the patient needs to change their behavior. It helps the patient to connect their behavior, their change in behavior, to the vision and it clarifies what kind of changes are needed so that the patient uh, will, will change. And now let's go to stakeholder analysis. We could look at stakeholder analysis as a tool for social network analysis. That is, we try to understand the people who influence a, a patient's behavior. We note what these people will provide they will provide us with a, with a handle or a lever for changing the attitude and the, and the behavior of the patient. Here's an illustration. This is the doctor and this is the patient. And surrounding the patient is a network of friends, co-workers, the boss, his wife and family, his kids and relatives. And all of these people bear an influence upon the patient. So, uh, for example, in the, in the workplace, you might be the office doctor and you will have access to the boss and the co-workers. Notice that this, this actually extends the clinical encounter beyond the patient and into the patient's network of social influence. So, Understanding how to influence your patient is a combination, entails a combination of investigation, observation, analysis, and experimentation. 
it sounds so much it sounds so much like the the scientific uh, method right and you need to apply this in order to understand how to exert influence towards a patient so let's look at how social or how stakeholder analysis is used in the context of organizational change so i i put here an example this is the actual stakeholder analysis table or matrix and uh, the case is the hospital has decided to deploy electronic medical records in their office they will require the physicians the doctors to use electronic medical records and of course this will most probably mean that the doctors will will hand over the, the actual encoding to their secretaries or assistants so here we've included mr castro the president the secretaries and assistants and the physician physicians themselves no? uh, and on this column it says the stake or vfm what's in it for me uh, it's just a statement of what the person will gain what the stakeholder will gain for himself or herself if they assist in pushing for the change so for the president it's about getting the credit for changing the organization to become a more customer focused hospital so that makes him an ally of the change of course because he's the one who sponsored it and signed the budget we will assume that his intensity of stand is high note that i say we assume uh, this means you need to validate your assumptions by talking to the person and talking to the people around that person the degree of influence because he's president is high but this is not always necessarily true there are there are managers um, and leaders who don't exert a high degree of influence to their to their subordinates so you need to validate this by interviewing and by observing next we have the secretaries for them the what's in it for me is will it help me work better will it shorten my work time or is it just going to be extra work for me so their stand on the issue is they're sitting in the middle and their intensity of stand is medium and their degree of influence is also medium so we observe the secretaries and try to understand why they are sitting in the middle and eventually we try to influence them here in this example doctors are actually against this, the the electronic medical records because for them probably we haven't talked to them but eventually we need to validate probably they are resisting because they're not familiar with the technology but the most probable stake that they would have is we could sell to them this uh, system because it makes it more convenient for them to retrieve patient information so in when we use this for uh, organizational change we often look at people who are in the middle and work a lot towards converting them to become allies like the president uh, it doesn't mean we ignore the people who are against but it's just that the interventions and the work is easier if we focus it on the people who are in the middle or neutral then we can also work with the people we engage the people who are against the change so that we could win them over but it's in general it's easier to win over the people who are in the middle and this is also widely known in politics and in in uh, the military you know when in, like in times of uh, rebellion the people in the military try to persuade people in the middle not the people against so let's try to apply stakeholder analysis in individual change example in the in the doctor patient relationship during the clinical encounter the example here is we are trying to consider a treatment for the fa for a father with a heart ailment and the stakeholders here are the patient or the father his daughter and his wife for the father the stake the stake uh, uh, the what's in it for me is that he's the breadwinner and he's worried that if he doesn't if he doesn't get well uh, his family might be in trouble 
so he's uh, an ally and his in intensity of stand is high degree of influence probably high because he's the breadwinner but it all depends on your interview so your insight or action here is the patient's worry over the family may, pr may even actually make his condition worse so encourage the patient to focus on healing uh, his daughter is close to the father has contractual work and might be worried about the cost of the of the treatment so she's an ally her intensity is high but she doesn't really exert a lot of influence with the father so our action or insight here is to tell the patient to listen to your daughter explain to the daughter the different procedures and costs to allay the, the worries of the daughter and last we have the patient's wife who has an uh, emotional attachment to the husband and is worried about losing him so of course she's an ally the intensity of the stand is high the degree of influence is also high the the father or the patient listens to the wife so here we could we could enlist the wife to help monitor the medicines that th that we have to administer to the patient probably also the daughter but because she goes to work then that might be also a problem so uh, like i said previously if, if you don't have enough information just make assumptions and try to validate them when you are in the in the clinic consulting with the patient again remember it it takes a, a bit of creativity to be able to do this don't make don't make too extreme assumptions um, and always try to validate them with the patient and this might also involve actually asking the patient to bring the family with them in the in the clinic with you and again finally note that uh, what you put in here is actually in perpetual change you always try to validate because for example people will change their minds so you update this eventually and that's it for our presentation if you have any questions just email me um, the the yl coordinators will have my email address and you can also ask your instructors thank you very much